What's happening everyone, my name is Alex and welcome back to a new review. And this is in fact the first review for 2019. So today we are checking out another budget friendly device from Elefon called the Elefon A5. So you can buy this phone for about $200, but the phone looks and feels like a phone that's about $1000. The front looks like an iPhone um, and the back looks like the Huawei P20 Pro. So it's glass on the front, glass on the back and a metallic frame. We even get a 3.5mm audio jack and that's something that we don't usually see these days and the sound quality from the audio jack is also pretty good. The phone can also take an SD card so you can either take an SD card and a SIM card or two SIM cards and that SD card can also be used as internal storage. So the phone is powered by the MediaTek Helio P60. This is a CPU that has a similar performance to the Snapdragon 660 and that CPU is paired with either 4 or 6 gigs of RAM, 64 or 128 gigs of internal storage. I was also happy to see that the phone can be used with some US carriers. I mean you can use the phone anywhere in the world but some of the bands match some US carriers and that's not something that you usually see with a lot of Chinese devices. But definitely make your own research before buying this device and make sure that it actually works with your carrier. Alright, so moving to the front of the device, on the front we have a 6.18 inch screen. This is an IPS panel with the 1080p resolution and the screen looks absolutely gorgeous and it gets bright enough so you can use the phone outside. Now unfortunately we get a big notch in there and the notch cannot be hidden from the software and in the notch there we have a 2 megapixel camera and a 20 megapixel camera and unfortunately there is no notification light. The picture quality from that 20 megapixel camera is decent if you have plenty of light but as soon as you don't have enough light well the pictures are a bit out of focus. And the second camera I'm not sure if it's uh, real or fake because it doesn't seem to do anything. As I mentioned earlier the phone's frame is made out of metal and yes the frame looks gorgeous but keeping the frame clean it's not the, the easiest thing out there because every single time you touch it you're gonna leave a fingerprint on it and the fingerprints don't look that great on it. So uh, on the right hand side we have the volume keys, the power button and the fingerprint scanner and yes the positioning of the fingerprint scanner is a bit more unusual but the fingerprint scanner works really really good so you just touch it and the phone unlocks and this is actually faster than a lot of phones that I've tried in the past. At the bottom we have the holes for the microphone and of course the holes for the speaker and the USB-C port. So this phone supports OTG and fast charging but the fast charging is not that fast. So charging this phone from 0 to 100 is done in about 2 hours and 20 minutes. So definitely not that fast. But I guess that's alright considering that we have a 4000 mAh battery. But we'll talk about that in a second. So this phone has only one speaker and yes the speaker gets pretty loud but unfortunately it's only one speaker so it can't really do that much and this is a quick sample so you can hear how the speaker sounds. And going back to that 4000 mAh battery, well I have to say that I was a bit disappointed. So I was never able to get more than 5 hours uh, of screen on time, actually just under 5 hours of screen on time. And from a 4000 mAh battery that's not that great. So the software optimization at least for power efficiency isn't that great. However the software optimization for performance is better than a lot of other phones that I tried with the Helio P60. So pretty much all the apps that you're gonna use with this device like Facebook, Chrome, YouTube or even gaming, everything seems to work a bit better than other devices using the Helio P60. So I'm not sure if that was done on purpose to get better performance and a lower battery life but um, the phone works better than other devices. On the YouTube app the maximum resolution that you can select is 1080p at 60 frames per second and I love the fact that when you zoom in the notch is not in your video and that's important for me. I also played games like PUBG and the, the graphics settings are set to medium and as you can probably see for yourself the phone performs really really good and I haven't actually noticed any skipped frames. So as I said before the software optimization is done mostly towards performance not exactly towards um, power efficiency. And moving to the back of the phone, yes the back of the phone looks identical to the Huawei P20 Pro and we even have three cameras on the back there. The main camera is a 12 megapixel sensor, then we have a 5 megapixel sensor and a 0.3 megapixel sensor. 
Now the last camera seems to be fake or it doesn't do anything, so you're only gonna be using the first two cameras. So I took a bunch of pictures with this phone during the day and during the night, and if you take pictures during the day, the pictures turn out really good, even the portrait mode turns out really good, the edge detection around the, the subject is decent, I mean maybe not as good as you'd get from the Google Pixel, but definitely decent for a phone around $200. But when you take pictures in low light, well, the pictures aren't as sharp. And if you start zooming in, you're going to notice that the, the pictures, the subjects basically are a bit out of focus. So this phone will be great for daytime pictures, not that great for nighttime pictures. And well, we have a fake camera on the back there as well. Moving on to the GPS unit inside this phone. Well, it works really, really good. It only takes a second to find your location and it actually works better than a lot of other phones that I've tried in the past. And it doesn't seem to lose your location even if you're driving between taller buildings. For sensors, we have all the sensors that you'd find in a flagship device, including a gyroscope. Connectivity-wise, as I said before, you can use this phone pretty much anywhere in the world, and here in Canada I was able to use it on 2G, 3G, and on 4G. Of course, we get dual-band Wi-Fi, but we don't get um, NFC. So definitely check the bands before buying this phone, and uh, make sure that the phone actually works um, with your carrier. The speaker on top here seems to get loud enough for most conversations, so no complaints about that. As for the speeds over the 4G network and the dual band Wi-Fi, they're also pretty good and on par with other devices at the same price range. And it's time to conclude this video. So for under $200, you get an absolutely gorgeous phone with a gorgeous screen and a couple of fake cameras. And they could have just got rid of those fake cameras because I would have been just as happy. The performance is also better than other phones using the same processor, but the battery life isn't that great. And I was kind of expecting a bit more from a 4000 mAh battery. So for $200, I think it offers pretty good value, but there are a lot of other phones around $200 that are also pretty good. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did like it, press that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.